Unless you live in a bunker, you know video games are one of the biggest ways to consume media. <laughs> However, just like movies or shows, if you go deep enough into obscurity, you'll find some very weird stuff. So today, we're going to talk about a few obscure games that I found disturbing or have something weird about them. Also, there will be some gameplay to kill your attention span. So without further ado, let's dive in. Sad Satan and Lostboy.exe Now, I'm sure many of you have heard of Sad Satan, but I paired these two together because of how similar they are in terms of gameplay and story. But for Sad Satan, the story goes somewhat like this. Jamie, owner of their obscure horror corner YouTube channel, was given a tip about a game called Sad Satan from a subscriber who claimed to have gotten it from a user called ZK. So basically, this guy named ZK gave a tip about the game to a subscriber of the channel who then told Jamie. After searching the dark web using Tor, Jamie found the game and uploaded gameplay to his channel. The video gained a lot of attention, enough to actually cause an interview from Kotaku. And after the interview about the game, a subreddit began around Sad Satan, where Jamie would give a .onion address to download the game. Quickly, people found that the address Jamie had given them for the game had missing characters, meaning people were unable to access and download the game. Jamie claimed he did this on purpose because the game contained gore and child pornography, and he did not want to feel responsible for the spread of such content. Which, if you didn't want to do that, then why would you provide a fake link in the first place? However, someone claiming to be ZK, the person who originally had the game, posted an apparent true version of the game on 4chan, and quickly, people ran to play it. Immediately, many people began reporting problems with the game. People said the game ran sluggish, some even had their computers shut down and never turning on again. This version of the game was called The Clone by the subreddit. But these people did get what they wanted because though there were many issues, the game was playable and indeed did contain the Goran CP that was mentioned. I don't know why you would be excited about that, but to each their own, I guess. Another version was made after this that removed the CP and Gore. This was dubbed the clean version, which is the one that is most popular and played by most people who take an interest. Now, I couldn't find confirmation of this, but I remember people who played the game felt very nauseous and sick after playing, most likely because of the gore and CP, but I specifically remember that. <coughs> There's still a lot of speculation about whether all of this is true. Some believe it was just a stunt to promote the game, but from what I've seen, there was a version that did contain the Gorn CP. As I mentioned at the beginning, a game called Lostboy.exe is very similar in terms of game and incident but significantly worse. Lost Boy started on no surprise 4chan during the Slender Man uproar, where the game would be posted and people wanting something new went to download it. A week later, suspicion started around the game. People suspected that it was a fraud in which they were right. Turns out the game had a rat file known as a remote access, meaning that though the game's files were valid and there was indeed a game to play, in the background a malware virus would steal your information. Okay, so update. Um, I kind of got something wrong. So the version I'm talking about was an alternate version somebody made to mess with people. So somebody originally uploaded the game and it was fine. And then somebody else came, put the virus, the malware into it. And that's the version I'm talking about here. Around a malware virus would steal your information. The creator of the game would begin to post unsolicited pictures of people who downloaded the game, as well as bank account statements and other personal information. Gameplay wise, both games are very similar. Both games have you walking around a maze where pictures will randomly pop up and scare you. Sad Satan puts a little more effort to actually disorient the player with its visuals and creepy music. Demonophobia a shorter one on this list, Demonophobia is a 2D girl survival horror game, and if you don't know what girl is, bless your soul. But basically, it's an adult anime gore porn. But basically, it's adult anime gore porn. Now, I don't know what exactly I can show, but if this is allowed on YouTube kids, then I should be fine. Anyways, the game follows a girl named Sakuri Kunakai, 
who jokingly summons a demon for revenge but finds herself awoken in hell the next day. And what ensues are cutscenes of Sakodi getting killed in the most gruesome ways possible, while completely conscious by the way, as she of course tries to escape from hell. Now the deaths in the game are absolutely crazy. According to this one in the wiki I found, in one instance, if caught by Lucifer, he will raise a katana between Sakuri's thighs, causing her to urinate in fear as a blade touches her genitals, after which he slices her in half from crotch to head, killing her. This game is obviously for a fetish, which is why most girl is made, being that the protagonist is like naked half the time too. Now from what I've heard, the game does have a sequel called Xenophobia, but I couldn't find much about it besides this Google Play Store page and screenshots. But if this is the true sequel, then it looks like an actual serious attempt at horror. Drowned God Conspiracy of Ages Drowned God is a science fiction point and click adventure game that was released in 1996 and was created by Epic Multimedia Group. The story was written by Harry Horse and was based on manuscripts he wrote years prior to making the game. The game's story proposes the theory that all human history is a lie and that our development as a species was aided by extraterrestrials. You as a player are tasked with uncovering the truth as you solve puzzles and interact with some fictional and some historical characters, like Albert Einstein. The game has this really abstract and weird atmosphere that can make anyone uncomfortable. And though this game does have this weird atmosphere, that's not not necessarily what's wrong or scary about the game itself. The writer of the game, Harry Horse, who I mentioned earlier, had a very strange event that would end his life. On January 10th, 2007, Harry would be found holding his wife's corpse after reportedly stabbing her more than 30 times and leaving the now broken blade inside her. Horse then killed the pets and began turning the knife onto himself where he would mutilate his genitals. Many believed it was a sort of suicide pact, however, an article from 2008 revealed that this was not the case. The father of the wife spoke out about this saying, this was no living suicide pact. It was murder. Mandy, the wife, had arranged to go with her mother, Grace, to the dentist the morning they were found. She wasn't planning on suicide. Friends of Mandy also reported that Horace was in a demented state, saying things like, it's a wonderful night for killing. Now the game serves as a reminder of this sick tragedy. Taiwan 2001 Taiwan 2001 is considered to be lost, but was a parody of the now infamous Hong Kong 97. Now I'm sure many of you know, but for those who don't, Hong Kong 97 is a poorly made shoot 'em up game that was created to be basically the worst game ever created, as well as mock Nintendo's strict quality standards for licensing the game and to just making mock out of the video game industry as a whole. The game is synonymous with its heavy anti-communist and anti-Chinese overtones, and also how difficult it is. Taiwan 2001 is practically the same game as Hong Kong 97, with some slight differences. The plot takes place in Taiwan in 2001 when citizens of China begin to move into Taiwan, causing an uproar in crime and violence. You play as Wang Shou Min, and you are tasked to stop your relative Wang Shou En. As I said, the game is lost, but there are screenshots of the game and it's pretty much the same as Hong Kong 97. Like when you die, it shows a picture of what I presume to be a real body. On that BBS Games Another short one on this list, but Omnet BBS games are games that were created by Om Shirinko, a Japanese cult that was behind the Tokyo subway Syrian attacks that killed 14 and injured around 5,000 people. This cult created games in order to promote more people into their cult. There aren't any videos or screenshots of the game, but coincidentally, a game that was created by Happy Software, the people behind Hong Kong 97, created a game called The Story of Kamoshiki Village, where you play as the leader of the cult as you are prepared to conduct the incidents I talked about earlier. Super Columbine Massacre RPG SEM, as I'll call it from now on, is exactly what you think. It is a role-playing game where you as a player carry out the events of the shooting down to an almost uncomfortable amount of detail. The game starts on the day of the massacre to the suicide of both Eric and Dylan and even follows them into hell. The game was created by Danny Lidone and released on April 20th, 2005. Definitely no coincidence there. Surprisingly, the game was actually made with some good intention. Danny felt inspired to create a game about the shooting based on his experience of bullying and the effect the shooting had on his life. He also wanted to explore what caused the shooter to do such a horrible crime, but this game is still very messed up, good intentions or not. Gameplay wise, it plays like your standard pixel RPG game. It's 16-bit, top down, but when you get into a fight, it turns first person, where you can either choose manual or autoplay. It's really the context of what you're doing that makes the game really messed up, and the amount of detail the game puts in is insane. Like a lot of the dialogue and events are ripped straight out verbatim from the actual shooting, but the second half is much weirder. After both suicides, the game takes place in hell, and obviously 
all fictional from there. It plays like a regular RPG where you fight demons from Doom. The pair also meets a lot of fictional characters for some reason like Mega Man and Bart Simpson and they also meet real people like Malcolm X and Oppenheimer. It's really weird and very out of place. It's almost as if Danny wasn't even making the same game anymore. The game was widely misunderstood for good reason. Danny's main reason for making the game was to open up discussion on shootings without the quote unquote glamorization. But just like the movie Cuties, that is not the way you open up a discussion by just showing it and being edgy about it. Good intentions or not, it's still a very messed up game at the end of the day, especially with a weird second half like that. Today, we saw that when you dive deep enough into obscurity, you are guaranteed to find games that push what can be show or done. But not only are these games super weird, but the stories behind them can be just as interesting. And if there's one thing we learned today, that is, maybe we should just stick to playing Fortnite.